I want to start with an obvious point. If there was just one Christian, we would all think that he's crazy. Not just crazy, but completely fucking insane. This guy actually believes that a magic man, born from a virgin, walked around the Middle East turning water into wine and performing other magic acts. And it gets worse. His dad, who is God, who is also him, wrote a book that tells us what to do. And there's something about a talking snake in there too. So this lone Christian is a complete nutcase. That much is obvious. But for some reason, because Christians are a large group, we overlook the insanity of their worldview. Another obvious point. Cults are looked down on almost universally, including by religious people. Cults are rightly recognized as being composed of deluded individuals, of crazy people, usually being manipulated by a leader. Well, I ask you this. What is the difference between a cult and a religion? This is not a rhetorical question. I am looking for an answer here. The legal answer is size. When a cult reaches a big enough population, it is considered a religion. And this is also true in social terms. When a cult reaches a big enough size, it will have the respect accorded to religion. Until then, it's just a bunch of crazy people. Let's talk specifically about mental disorders. What are the characteristics of different mental disorders? When you get down to it, does religion really fit the description of a mental disorder? Number one, neurosis. A functional disorder in which feelings of anxiety, obsessional thoughts, compulsive acts, and physical complaints without objective evidence of disease in various degrees and patterns dominate the personality. Besides the physical complaints, this sounds like a description of your typical Christian or Muslim. Anxious about their sins, obsessing about what God wants, and compulsively praying. Five times a day in the case of Muslims. This religious behavior is neurotic, plain and simple. Number two, psychosis. A mental disorder characterized by symptoms such as delusions or hallucinations that indicate impaired contact with reality. Impaired contact with reality and delusions. This is the essence of any religion. Delusion. A fixed false belief that is resistant to reason or confrontation with actual fact. I don't think I need to go into depth here. This sounds exactly like religion to me. Number four, monothematic delusion. A delusional state that only concerns one particular topic. In the case of the religious, this monothematic delusion concerns the veracity of a collection of myths. Number five, schizophrenia, a state characterized by the coexistence of contradictory or incompatible elements. Christians believe that God is all loving but you better believe in him or he'll send you to burn in hell for eternity. You have to be seriously twisted not to see a contradiction here. The, the mythologies of the various uh, religions I've studied, including Eastern religions, have a common theme of including powerfully contradictory elements. This leads me to believe that this might in some way strengthen the religion's hold on its believers. Religious people are forced to compartmentalize their minds to make room for all the contradictions. It's the old divide and conquer strategy. Chop their mind into pieces and take control over each of them. Cognitive deficit. A cognitive deficit is an inclusive term to describe any characteristic that acts as a barrier to cognitive performance. Anyone who has tried reasoning with the religious knows why this applies to them. They are utterly resistant to facts and common sense. It's like talking to a tape recording. They just keep re repeating the same thing over and over again. There are certain simple arguments that they are just unable to comprehend and simple facts that they just won't accept, presumably because it would mean that their belief would be shaken. So they shut those arguments out and they shut those facts out. Number seven, grandiose disorder. A delusion of inflated worth, power, knowledge, identity, or special relationship to a deity or famous person. This fits Western religious thinking to a T. Christians and Muslims think they have knowledge of what God wants. They think they have the power to talk to God. They think that he listens to them. In short, they are batshit insane. Number eight is a quote. 
Much modern psychological research shows that many serious psychic problems or personality disorders are connected with unfortunate early experiences. The more serious a mental disorder, the more likely it has originated early in life. In other words, get them while they're young. It's very hard to turn a 30-year-old man into a fundamentalist. If you see a fundamentalist, it was probably someone brainwashed as a child. Ideally, if you want to spread your religion better, you want to traumatize the child somehow. For example, tell them they're going to burn in a pit of fire, tortured by twisted demons for all eternity. So that was a brief explanation for why religion should be viewed as a mental disorder. If you disagree with me, then you've got some explaining to do. You're going to have to explain why psychotic behavior is okay just because people call it religious. You're going to have to explain why neurotic behavior is okay just because lots of people are doing it. You're going to have to explain why delusional thoughts are okay just because they come from a book that someone says is magical. If you agree with me, if you realize that religion is a mental disorder, then there is a tiny change that I want you to make. Stop saying that people are religious. That makes it sound like religion is something that they have, when in fact religion is something that has them. It is a sickness that has taken a grip over them. What you should refer to them as is not a religious person, but someone afflicted with religion. A moderate Christian is someone with a mild affliction, and a devout Christian is someone with a severe affliction. When you talk about the rising presence of Islam in Europe, you shouldn't say that Islam is stepping up its presence, or that Islam is taking a foothold. You should say that Islam is infecting Europe. I'm not advocating taking away religion. You are absolutely free to practice your own religion, just as you are absolutely free to be schizophrenic, or delusional, or neurotic. But I am opposed to willfully spreading your disease to others, especially children. That is an infraction of their rights.